This is my fourth video, fifth if you include the live stream I did today. So I get wine. It's also my last video I'm filming today. Anyway, welcome guys to my June wrap up, which means I finally, finally wrapped up May. Somebody applauded for me. I hope somebody somewhere out there in, in internet land is clapping for me successfully catching up on all of my wrap ups. Anyway, on to June. I was, on, um, I hope, understandably burnt out in June. And I did not do as well on my chunky book challenge as I had originally in, hoped. I wouldn't say intended because I don't think I had any intention. But I was hopeful that I could get to 10. But I'm proud of myself and I will pat myself on the back because I got to 7. So, And I read a total of 20 books this month. A few of them have reading vlogs, so I don't know if I have a lot to say on it, but I'm going to try to summarize these books for you. We're going to see if I have any brain cells left. I've been filming all day. I have so much editing to do over the next few weeks. We're just, we're going to try. We're going to try our damnedest to make this make sense. Make it make sense, friends. Make it make sense. Anyway, I've lost my mind, but we'll start off the month. I started off the month. Oh God. Oh, Jesus with um, By Gaslight, which is this behemoth of a book um, by Stephen Price that both Naomi, a book lady reads, and I purchased when I visited her down in, the, in, in Virginia. You can see that book haul somewhere. I think I got it for like three bucks. And it was good. It was an interesting murder mystery that spans like quite a bunch of time and place. And basically you have this guy who's hunting, this Pinkerton guy who's like hunting down this criminal that he feels like his dad was always hunting down. And then he finds out some other stuff, you know, whatever. So it takes him on an epic journey of of mystery and whatever. It's definitely interesting. It just, I don't know if it needed to be like 700 pages. It's a little slow at times. It's a little try hard. It's a little much. Now, let me tell you, Naomi loved this she ate this shit up she loved it i was kind of like it's fine i read it it's fine i don't know what else to tell you about it it's fine if you want to read it if you like really sweeping epic stories read this you might love it i don't <laughs> I, I didn't hate it that's what i'm gonna say is i didn't hate it but it was, it was just fine. I don't know where this book is. Where are you? There you are. This is another recommendation from uh, the Punlet Pam. You've heard me talk about her quite a bit. Uh, she gives me some fantastic nonfiction recommendations. And this is not about the burqa, which is a collection of stories written by Muslim women about being a Muslim woman, about being a Muslim feminist, and how, you know, it's not about the burqa. Like there is like anything a depth of people and beliefs and culture and experiences and they're all valid. I don't know. It was it was really good. It just showed you all the different kinds of women that make up the umbrella of Muslim women and it shouldn't you shouldn't need a text to tell you that not everyone is the same but they all deserve respect. But Guess what? We needed a collection of essays to tell us this because the world is fucked up. So, but anyway, it is beautiful. It is well written. It is insightful. It is. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. This is one of my audiobook and walk books, and I absolutely adored this. And I am so grateful to Pam for recommending this to me because I I never would have heard of it otherwise. And it was just it was so fantastic. And I kind of want to read it again and mark it up because I did read it. A listen while I was walking for a lot of it and I kind of want to mark it up because some of these stories were really 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 amazing and heartbreaking and I don't know this book was really good read it I also listened to a collection of essays and interviews with Noam Chomsky who's this political pundit uh, I don't know if he's even still alive because he's it was very old when this was done and this was during this was like four years ago um but it was it's called global discontents and it is a very he's got a very interesting view uh an intelligent view on the world and what is happening in the world and 
I found it fascinating. I've never even listened to Noam Chomsky. I've definitely heard the name around and because he's a big deal, but I don't think I've ever listened to anything and I kind of want to go back and I, and, and I think he has, has he passed? Let's Google this. Hold on. We are Googling. Do we like the new setup? Are we, are we enjoying the new setup so that, you know, you just see me in a microphone? I feel like I am, I'm like, I'm like a streamer. Anyway, sorry, he's an American linguist, but I don't feel like he's a linguist. Oh, I guess he's still alive. He's an American linguist, philosopher, cognitive scientist, historian, social critic, and political activist. He is, I mean, he honestly is, is fascinating. Um, I, I really encourage you to find the audiobook of this, Global Discontents, because it's probably the, I think it was like the most recent thing I could find at my library. If you can find something more recent, please let me know. Um, but it was very interesting to listen to him speak himself, um, not in a transcript or something hear his actual like intonations, et cetera, et cetera, and, and get his points of view on everything that was happening and, and, and how, you know, the last election really has, you know, it does have an impact on today. Duh. Um, but it was, it was really, I'm rambling cause I have been talking too long and I don't know if I'm making any sense. So basically just go listen to this, go listen to global discontents, go to your library, borrow it, listen to it. He is incredibly intelligent and critical of lots of people he is not this might be the most unbiased pundit I can find that I know of so far Um, because I truly believe that all politicians deserve criticism and nobody is perfect and I don't I don't yeah I want I want everybody to be held to the same standard of criticism anyway get off getting off my soapbox now Uh, I also read well I listened to a book because I didn't have a hard copy of Highway of Tears which is about this stretch of road in Canada where a lot of indigenous women in particular go missing and uh, are often not even found Um, many are found later obviously dead and it's an incredibly sad story of how much is not done to help these families find their loved ones Um, how much the indigenous peoples have banded together to try to raise awareness to try to find their loved ones to find out if even just to find their bodies and it's incredibly sad incredibly sad like to know that there's a stretch of road where they tell women not to travel alone because there's just so many out there like taking women but they're also like not doing anything to find the person who's taking women it's it's a must listen if you can listen to such hard and sad things i uh of course read jane Eyre laid bare which you can watch my entire reading vlog on that if you would like essentially it's an erotic retelling of jane Eyre with dominatrix and a sex dungeon Yes, it's that awful. Anyway, uh, for uh, TBR Lowdown, the Diverse Reads book club that I run with some friends, we read as our main pick, we have three books this month because we were just could not stop picking books, but our main pick was The Other Black Girl, which was fantastic. This is a thriller, but it has like get out vibes, but I almost feel like comparing it to something else cheapens it in a way but it has that feeling it gives you that same uncomfy feeling it is so good essentially we have our two characters we have Nella who's been working in publishing forever and we have Hazel who is this other black girl who shows up and starts working in the office and there's something quite not quite right about her like she just seamlessly blends in with everybody else she starts kind of taking over um with Nella's editor that she works for and she starts wheedles, weasel, wheedles her way in, and it's um, very interesting. Um, there's also this other editor who has gone missing in the past. So there's this whole, it's, it's there's a little bit of mystery. There's a lot of like thriller. There's a lot of like, you know, you, it's just unsettling and it's, it's really good. It's really freaking good. Read this. If you have never read this, read this. Just read it. How many times do I need to say that? I also listened to um, the audiobook of an indigenous people's history of the United States, which is 
a very concise because you have to imagine there's a lot of stuff to get through but a very concise retelling of a lot of major uh, events in American history that most of us are familiar with learning from one perspective during school especially those of us who are of an age uh, like myself and gives you the alternate version of it and by I mean alternate I mean the other side's perspective um, there is the whitewashed version that we learn in school and then there's what what we actually did in like more black and white terms to particularly the indigenous people of this country um and it's very unsettling and it's like like we kind of know that we weren't i feel I, I can only speak to how i went to school um I, hey editing Alyssa. i'm hopping in here because i'm about to use a phrase that we do not use anymore because it has the potential to offend it is offensive it is incorrect to say it is a derogatory term and i am using it um purposefully in this one instance to describe how things were for me growing up um, and how they have changed and how we have changed and I understand I understand that this is not the correct terminology and I am using it to highlight a point of how some of us were taught and how things have changed and continue to need to change in how we educate ourselves on the treatment of indigenous peoples. Um, so I, I'm fully aware of this. I want to make it clear that I'm, I, I am aware of the word I'm about to say. I don't know how people le learn things today, but like, we kind of like, we're taught that, oh yeah, we weren't really great to the Indians, but we didn't really like go in depth about it. Maybe we should have, cause it was, it was awful. Cause one, they're native peoples. Two, we were terrible to our native peoples. So this is a, a very raw and honest review of what American history really looks like uh, and not just the textbook history that maybe we've learned uh, from an indigenous people's point of view. So it was very, very interesting. And I would actually like to get my hands on a hard copy of it and um, mark it up for, for my own... Um, reference because there's a lot of stuff that I kind of feel like I didn't quite uh, digest fully um, in the one time listening to it. Uh, I read a new to me fantasy. This is the first in a new fantasy series that I absolutely loved. And if you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I was like geeking out over this the entire time I was reading it. It's called The Helm of Midnight by um, Marianne Luster. And it is this like weird, macabre, like Victoriana, futuristic sci-fi fantasy. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, you've got like death masks and like this like weird magic and it's just, there's a murder mystery. It's got like little bits of like Jack the Ripper in it. It's just this strange and beautiful thing and I can't wait to read the next one but I also like I don't know where they're going in the next one because of how it ended anyway so like I'm really excited I I highly recommend this I thought it was fantastic and just so good I read the second book in Game of Thrones A Clash of Kings uh finally I don't know if I like this one as much as the first one it feels like a setup book I think that that happens often in a in a fantasy series there's often a setup book that starts to move more of the players around and so we can have greater action later in the series and but i do like aria i'm hoping that i've i haven't watched all of game of thrones so don't judge me for not knowing anyway um i hope that sansa gets an arc of like a redemption where she's not awful and i know that she does like she has to but i still don't really like her but i i i really Tyrion's my favorite and I love Arya she's she's growing on me and I can't wait for book three so I can find out more of the story because this is about about halfway through here is where I stopped watching the show we're going into like completely blind next next book I don't know anything about so that should be interesting I listened to on Juneteenth because Libro FM sent me a copy of it um to read and I really enjoying this little novella now this was not what i thought it was going to be 
I thought this was going to be more of a book about Juneteenth itself. But to my surprise, and I actually kind of like what they did with it, it's more of a collection of stories about Black struggle and about enslavement and about why it's important as a holiday. And it's it was really good and definitely worth a read. It's super short. Very happy that it is now a holiday, but I don't want people to think that that's sufficient. Um, there's still a lot of stuff that has to be done. Like we, it's not like, oh, Juneteenth is a holiday now. Like, look, we're good for another 40 years. No, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of race relations in this country. And uh, that's just a step in the right direction. I read Ice Planet Barbarians, which again, there's a reading vlog for this wonderfully awful in all the best ways. <laughs> Bizarre alien romance. I loved this. I I don't want to go too far in depth in this. Please just watch the the, the reading vlog. Essentially, a bunch of bunch of human women end up on a planet with big blue aliens and romance ensues and it's ridiculous but it's also wonderful I, I can't it's so good how can I have a list where I have Noam Chomsky and Ice Planet Barbarians on together did you ever think these two things would be in one list no I didn't either but they are welcome to my brain I'm weird, but lovable. I read Magpie Murders by Anthony Horwitz, which I absolutely love this. This is was giving me all the mystery vibes that I wanted. I have been in this romance mystery going back to my roots of reading place, I think because I was coming off of May and I just needed to reset in my happy place, which is romance and mystery. And I was doing that and I loved this. It is basically it's like a story within a story and you have this editor who's reading this guy's manuscript and he has passed away and there's like a murder in the manuscript but then that murder starts to point to things in real life and then they have to figure that out and I loved it I love it so much it is so good I need to read more by the author I read The Chosen and the Beautiful which is a great great Gatsby retelling with a fantasy twist um, and it's told from Jordan Baker's perspective and Jordan Baker is actually uh, I believe she's half Chinese um, but either way she's Chinese and it, you get a look at uh, race relations and you get a look at this you get a look at Gatsby's story from a different perspective and we read this for TV or Lowdown. We did talk about it today on the live stream. And I actually enjoyed this. I think that the author's writing is phenomenal, like absolutely phenomenal. I do think that in a short novella like this, trying to do fantasy and a discussion of race and a retelling of a classic novel was a lot to try to get done. Okay, so I don't know what my phone did. It's like totally freaked out on me. Everything's been freaking out on me today. Where were we? We were talking about The Chosen and the Beautiful. Yes. So I think that the author was attempting to do a lot in a novella. I think that the author would be fully capable of doing it in a longer format um, book. But in a novella, that was a lot to try to accomplish all in one go. I honestly would have preferred if they just sort of ditched the fantasy element and just focused on the retelling and um, maybe the race relations because I think that that would have added a lot to the Great Gatsby story. But in general, I really liked it. I would recommend it to other people to read. I think that it was really well done. I'm trying to refocus. Battery's dying and everything's just falling apart at this point and I just need to finish filming for the day. So let's finish this. So I read uh, The Secret History by Donna Tartt unpopular opinion time I hated it <laughs> I still love Donna Tartt's writing I think she can write the shit out of a book this book was way too much like less than zero which I talked about in my May wrap up by Brett Easton Ellis which is not surprising because they are like friends she dedicates this book to him it is just this is just so pretentious this is like the 90s version of less than zero where you just have these whiny white boys that are overly privileged and get away with fucking murder, literally. And 
it's just like I have I don't know it was too pretentious it was too uh, the characters were just they weren't even morally gray they were just awful like I there was nothing redeeming about any of the people in this book I don't even think the aspect of this with their teacher, like the teacher was stupid. Like I, this isn't even dark academia. This is just whiny teens. Like I, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't see the appeal. I don't know why it's like this dark academia, like, like it's like the perfect dark academia book. It's not like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's not this, like you're not dead poet society. It just didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. She can read the shit out of a book. I will read whatever she re- writes next. The Goldfinch is still one of my favorite books of all time. But The Secret History didn't do it for me. I, I just, I don't know, I'm sorry. I read Breast and Eggs, which is, this book was phenomenal. It's one of my favorite books of the year. I can tell you that hands down. It was so good. I need to own a hard copy of it. Book one follows it's like two separate books that are sort of squished together but they follow the same set of sisters and the first book is breasts and that's about the one sister wanting to get breast implants and it's more than that but it's about family dynamics it's about uh living in poverty it's about being a single mother it's about um survival it's about a lot of things it's about aging it's about body image it there's a lot to unpack in this little book and then you have the second half which is longer and that is eggs and that is all about the other sister trying to come to terms with one her general dislike of sex and her desire to have a child and the social stigma of having in vitro outside of marriage and all of these things and it's just a fanatic it's a fantastic it's a fantastic exploration of what does it mean to be a woman what does it mean to not enjoy sex what does it mean to want to be a mother despite that what does it mean it's it's so good it was I loved it so much it was so good Naomi and I will be talking about it later we read it together we will be talking about it at some point I don't know when this is going out and when that's happening but it was so good. I really do encourage you. It's translated from Japanese. The translators did an amazing job. It's fantastic. I have a nice little slump of awful books. Um, I read Persephone Station, which I, I really did want to like this book. I think that the premise was very, very good. This idea of this sci-fi novel that takes a look at the treatment of indigenous peoples. And I just unfortunately think that it wasn't executed well. I just really did not enjoy it. There was no um connection for me with 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 the characters so that when they were in peril or there was something happened I didn't care there was no tension and there were just like too many dialogue tags which I never really think about that as being an issue until it becomes one and then you're like oh my god I cannot avoid these dialogue tags there were way too many dialogue tags and this is like a classic sufferer of telling not showing and it, I just, I couldn't, I, it really hurt me to read this, unfortunately. I just, I just couldn't do it. It wasn't for me. I didn't like it. Um, I, I, anyway, uh, I read The Ones We're Meant to Find, which was actually a May pick for TBR Lowdown, but I was very late to the game on this one. And again, like, I don't really know what this really was. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it it's beautiful but I didn't I didn't like it I feel like if you want a story that's sort of sci-fi and eco um like eco sci-fi I would go Claire and the sun don't go don't go with this I, I didn't like it it wasn't good the one sister when she the sister that's stuck on the island I liked her storyline the other sister who's like you know not dead sorry to burst that bubble I didn't like that storyline it was stupid anyway I also read The Library of the Dead, which is one of our July, our last July pick for TBR Lowdown. And I did enjoy this. It was fine. It was like a three star, nothing to write home about read. However, comma, this is an adult fantasy, allegedly. 
it is written like a very young YA fantasy. Naomi and I talk about this a lot on the live today. So if you want to check that out, you can check out the live. I think I've referenced it a few times in this video. But I just, some of the language choices too for our like 15 year old main character are weird. Like they just don't feel believable. And it's just, it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. It was like, it did what it said. Like it was a fantasy. It was ent entertaining. But it just wasn't what I was expecting from an adult fantasy with like ghosts and magic and death. And it just, I wanted, I was expecting, I guess, more grimdark. This was more like Harry Potter and not even as dark as Harry Potter. So, yeah. I listened to The Witch King, so I don't have a hard copy of it. And I thought this was fun. Here's an example of how every fantasy doesn't have to be complex to be enjoyable. This was a wonderfully um, light fantasy that's heavy on the characters and the character relationships and lighter on the world building. And it doesn't lose anything from that. Uh, we have a trans main character who is um, mated to a fae king. Uh, he's a witch. She and... And witches are actually like fairies that aren't fairies. Anyway, um, but the fairies tend to throw out their babies that are witches and like whatever. So there's this whole world where like witches are sort of second class citizens. But this fairy prince uh, is ends up mated to this witch. And the witch ends up being trans. And he... Um, there's, there's like some sorts of misunderstandings that, that make them not stay together, but then they end up together again and you start to see them start to unravel their misunderstandings and figure each other out. And there's all kinds of other stuff happening in like the fairy world and contention and political drama. And we kind of end and I can't wait for the next book, but it was just, it was just great. It was fun. It was interesting. It was quirky. It was queer. It was, it was great. It was wonderful. And I, I just truly enjoyed it. The last book number 24, June, and hopefully I'll be finally done with this video because I've been filming it for what feels like hours, is The Child Thief by Brahm. Now this is a favorite of Naomi's. I showed this in my recent haul and it is also a chunky book. So it's my seventh chunky book and it is a dark Peter, Tan Peter Pan retelling, um, but it's not straight Peter Pan. He, Brahm mixes in a bunch of other similar fairy tales that are like Peter Pan from different cultures. And you get all kinds of different creatures and things in here in Avalon and all these other things. And it's really beautifully con compiled, like urban retelling of Peter Pan. And it was dark and wonderful. And I just kept, as I was reading, I just kept thinking like of all the boys when I was growing up who loved Lord of the Flies, they would have loved this book. This book was so good and I'm mad that I don't have the dust jacket because it's absolutely a beautiful dust jacket and you get that lovely like is Peter Pan evil is he not evil does he care about the lost boys does he not care about the lost boys or the devils in this case and and he does but he also cares about the, the lady of the mist and like it's just it's so beautifully done and I cannot wait to to read Slew Foot by Brom because I've never read this author before this and it's fantastic. It is so well researched. It's so well executed. I loved this. This was the perfect way to end June. So I'm going to wrap up this video because it's been a slog for me to get to get through. Hopefully it doesn't appear that way when you're watching it, but it was very difficult for me technically. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, leave down below Peter Pan and I will hop on and comment and say hello. Uh, otherwise, please remember to like and subscribe. Um, I desperately in need of a camera. So if anybody feels the need or feels compelled to uh, donate through the Kofi link to that cause, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, any support, liking, subscribing, commenting, that is all I need um, to support the channel. But thank you so much for for watching again and I will see you guys in my next video whatever that may be because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want thank you so so much bye so just sit with me talking to the night into the morning building can't